So it started with a question on Twitter from Hussein. He said, does Lemonade share details around their long-term customer retention rate? Say, what percentage of the cohort of customers acquired in 2017 are still actively paying for a policy today? And to answer your question, no, they do not. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 At least not directly. And this is powerful, important information because if we could know what percentage of a customer group stays around, sticks around long term, you start to estimate what kind of percentage of customers could really become long term, sticky, possibly really profitable customers for Lemonade. And if we could also see how this is changing over time, we might get a sense of what kind of rate of improvement does Lemonade have in their customer retention? Also a really important question because that's part of the thesis that their customer retention should improve over time. So I figured out there is a way to calculate this. I'm gonna dive into the math. If you really hate the math, you can skip ahead and jump to the results, but I wanna break down how this was calculated. So first of all, Lemonade doesn't release any churn data, customer retention data on an actual customer basis. The only metric they give is their annual dollar retention or ADR. And that is the percentage of enforced premium retained over a 12 month period, inclusive of changes in policy value, changes in number of policies, changes in policy type, and churn. I did this in a previous video, and I, what I did is I took Lemonade's annual dollar retention, defined a bunch of other variables, active customers, premium per customer, end of the ADR period, and the beginning of the ADR period, and you do some math, you do some plugging in, rearranging, and you get down to churn, meaning the number of customers churned is that is the active customers at the start of a given period minus the active customers at the start times by the ADR for that whole period times by the premium per customer divided by uh, at the start divided by the premium per customer at the end. You plug all that in, that will give you the customer churn, the number of customers that are churning. And I had done this in a previous video using the ADR published data, which is always over a 12 month period but I kind of realized you could do this over longer periods of time by multiplying your ADRs together. So for example, you if you had 80% of ADR and you multiplied by one year and ADR was again 80% and you multiply those together, you get a combined two year ADR that equals 64%. So the ADR should be able to compound over time. So this is what I used to calculate the retention curves. So jumping over to this spreadsheet and this spreadsheet is available to my Patreon members. If you wanna support the channel, you get my entire Lemonade model, also this spreadsheet now. And of course I'll be adding more features and more items Items there inside my Patreon over time, but this is available there if you want to walk through it yourself. But I have all the quarters, total customers, premium per customer, annual dollar retention, and then I have what, 80, what I call ADR quarterly, which is really um, a kind of an average quarterly amount of the ADR because ADR is always over a 12 month period. So, say here you have in the last 12 months we had 70% ADR. And so, if you took 70% ADR and you multiply, you put that to the factor of one quarter or 0 0.25, you get 91% uh, ADR per quarter. So 91% multiplied four times together would get you 70%. So in other words, you had a 91% ADR reduction or factor over one single quarter. But of course, uh, each of these ADR values is kind of an approximation over each quarter and has 12 months of data within it. So I Basically, with each one of these ADR quarterly numbers, took the quarterly at the average of the four quarters within it and ahead of it uh, for each quarter. Then that gives you kind of an ADR quarterly value over time that's fluctuating from 91% as we go forward all the way up to 95 plus percent. And then inside of there, I had to look at each quarter from starting at uh, Q3 of 2018, the earliest quarter we can do this calculation for, all, all the way to Q1 of this year. I then calculate the percent of customers that churn using that churn calculation and also using the starting a value of customers for that quarter and then subtract that from one to get the customer retention amount. So this would be the customers from Q3 
2018, after one quarter, there's 89% of those customers are remaining. And then you go forward in time, after two quarters, there's 74%, 64%, on and on and on and on, all the way down after 15 quarters. So almost four years, 3.75 years, you're at eight, only 18% of those customers remain. And then I did this again, on and on and on, for each quarter over time, for example, in Q1 of 2020, you had 90%, 81, 72, 64, 57, 52, 47, 43, 40%, on and on and on. And as you can see, over time, as you go forward in time through each quarter, the num say we look after one year, the number of customers that are being retained is steadily improving. So after four quarters, we had 57% of customers remaining. But now with customers that started in Q2 of 2021 to now Q2 of this year, <clears throat> there are 70% of customers were still remaining. So actually getting to the visualized results, I plotted some of these quarters over time, not all of them because it just would have been too many lines on one graph, but plotted from Q3 2018, and then Q3 2019, 2020, 2021, and then I created Q, plotted Q1 of 2022, the very uh, the latest uh, cohort that we could measure. And as you can see, over time, the very oldest, Q2018, is at the bottom, has the lowest kind of shallowest retention curve over time. And then as you go up through time, the re customer retention is slowly improving. So the trend is that customer retention of each cohort is improving over time, which really is important and fits with the thesis that as more products are rolled out, customers are more satisfied and they stick with the company long term. It also fits with the thesis that bigger dollar products, as those products come out, they will attract more stable customers who are, have less change in life versus, say, renters who buy renter's insurance and have more um, variables in their life, more change in their life, are more likely to get renter's insurance and cancel it, maybe get it again later, et cetera, et cetera. You can also see we're shallowing out on each curve over time. So we're kind of approaching, there's a big drop right off the top, but then with the oldest customers from 2018, they're starting to approach almost a flat line. I mean, eventually all those customers will eventually trend all the way down to zero, but who knows how long that could take. Maybe they'll level out at around 15% for a long time and then slowly, slowly, slowly drop all the way down to 0%. Maybe that takes decades to even do that. And our hope is that as they roll out more products, as they have more products available, there's less customer churn and bigger ticket items. Then you start to see slopes like this. So then rather than being at 64% in 2018, you're now in 2021, three years later, you're at 76%. So a 12% increase over that time. So then maybe instead of 15% in the end, these customers leveling out at that, maybe there's 27% of these customers over the long haul are become really sticky, really profitable customers. And maybe that keeps improving uh, with more and more cohorts as they continue to roll out more products in more places. It's hard to also compare this to other insurers out there because most other insurers like legacy insurers wouldn't be publishing their new customer churn rate. It would be hard to really find or calculate that data, what kind of new customers are churning out. But most I would, and also most of those, those kind of insurers would have a large bank of low churn customers. They already have these large sort of built up bank of these customers who are stable and have not much change in life. So in conclusion, it is encouraging that the retention rate is improving over time and it should continue to get better, especially as products like Lemonade Car roll out that help uh, and, and allow people to bundle their insurance products together and have less reason to churn or change insurance providers if they're happy with the product they have. So it will be very interesting especially you're still very very early in the lemonade story to watch this progress over time and i will be updating each uh with each quarter as time goes by i will be updating this data and reviewing it and also we always have this full spreadsheet up to date and available to my patreon members so feel free to support the channel let me know in the comments down below what you think of all of this i'd love to hear from you remember it's in the bag